With my multi-patch warp-to-fit method, PTGUI 12 can stitch some stereoscopic panoramas almost automatically. In this example, I was able to put together a two-row panorama in a little under 19 minutes, and I'm not as fast as I once was. The multi-patch method is rather different from conventional stitching and takes advantage of some PTGUI features that are not commonly used, so you may find a good deal here that is new. In this video, I will take you through all the steps. So I'll launch PTGUI version 12 and load two rows of eight stereo pairs. These are JPEGs that I've developed from the original raw photos. First, the 16 images of the left series, and then the 16 images of the right series. The first eight images of each group are the upper rows. The second eight are the lower rows. And corresponding images on the, from the left and right series look the same because they are stereo pairs. Next. I'll apply preset red masks to all the images. In the Sources tab, I select the first eight images, right-click on the selection, and choose Load Mask. In the File Selector, I'll double-click on the mask for the upper rows. Next, I select left lower row images and load the appropriate mask. And then I'll repeat for the and lower rows of the right group. Now these masks are designed to select the upper or lower part of a sector 60 degrees wide. The views are 45 degrees apart, so the masks will overlap horizontally by 15 degrees. The upper and lower masks overlap by the same amount. PTGUI will create control points only where the masks overlap. Next, I'll ask PTGUI to generate control points separately for the left and right groups of images. In the Source tab, I select the first 16 images. Then, from the Control Points menu, I choose Generate Control Points for Selected Images. Then I'll do the same for the second group of 16 images. Now in the Control Points tab, we see that the generated control points are indeed where they belong, close to the seams between adjacent images. both horizontally and vertically. On the upper, lower row as well as the upper. And there are no control points between non-adjacent images. The control point assistant shows two linked clusters with no control points between them. Now I'm going to add a few special control points between the left and right groups that will align the left and right spheres for stereo viewing. I will first make four sets of horizontal line control points on corresponding upper row images spaced equally around the horizon. These will align the spheres in pitch and roll. To create them automatically, I use generate control points for selected images again. That makes a lot of control points, so I delete the ones far above or below the horizon, and then convert 
the rest to horizontal line control points by selecting them, right-clicking on one, and choosing horizontal line in the menu that pops up. Then I step two rows to the right by clicking the little double arrow and do it again. I'll repeat that two more times. I'm going to place a single normal control point on the ground near the nadir to align the spheres horizontally. This point will define the zero parallax distance of the stereoscopic view. I've chosen this log as a good point for that single normal control point linking my two groups. Now PT GUI says it has enough control points to align the images. But before I run the optimizer, I have to activate its option to process horizontal control points along with normal ones. Otherwise, I will get a mess. Now in the lens setting tab, I create four custom lens profiles by clicking the plus sign. Next, I will give each row its own lens parameters by assigning eight consecutive image numbers to each profile. These multiple lens parameters will give PT GUI the freedom to distort each row a little differently, and that is the key to warp to fit. Now I'm ready to align the panorama. The panorama editor window still shows all the images in the center. When I press function key 5, the optimizer tries to align my control points and this display shows that it has been successful. The panorama is somewhat out of level, which is a normal side effect of warp to fit, but I can easily fix that by dragging with the mouse. First, right drag at the side to control roll, and then left drag in the center to correct pitch. I'm just looking at this row of image numbers. Now I'll check for bad control points by looking in the control points table. Uh, the worst normal control point error is under 7 pixels, which is fine. So just a little more work with masks will make this a perfect panorama. I'll go through all the stereo pairs, making the same changes on left and right. I'll put green masks around things I want to be in the panorama, and red masks over th a few things that should be excluded. I won't need to paint a lot of red because a green mask excludes the corresponding parts of other images in current PT GUI. It did not used to do that. So I'm going to draw a green mask around this family group to make sure that no seams cut across them. And move one view to the right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. In this view, there are some cut-off feet, so I'm going to have to paint a green mask to include all these people. And get rid of that red and paint a matching green mask on the right.
I'm going to put a green on this lady to make sure she's in the panorama. The people to her, the left will be excluded because they're under a green mask in the adjacent image. Okay, so on the bottom row, well, I don't want this woman's legs in the panorama, so I'll make sure they don't get there. And the same for these guys' feet, although I don't think P.T. Gui would be likely to put them there anyway. All the other views are clean. Now in the detail viewer, I can see that P.T. Gui's seam optimizer has run these seams right up the trunks of the trees, saving me the trouble of doing that. Uh, this walking couple is where they belong and not where they don't belong. The seams go around this family group and their baby carriage, which is as it should be. And everything looks good until I get over here. I'm not happy uh, with the shadow under this man's foot. Uh, should be a little more of that showing. Uh, also, that guy back there has his foot cut by a seam. Something I like to avoid. So I'm going to go back to the mask tab and uh, improve those green masks a little bit. Uh, first I'll draw a bigger mask on the right. And then under the feet. And a little more. Fill in that, rid of that red, and uh, now I'll do the same thing on the left. Make a matching mask over there. And when I'm done, uh, now there's a good big area next to that guy's foot, and when I blend it, it looks just right. So before I do the final stitch, I want to improve the tone and color of this panorama a little bit. I'm going to use the uh, tone mapping function built into PT GUI 12 to brighten it up some, not that much. Uh, pull the sky down a little. Uh, I always defeat compression completely because it never makes the picture better. And I'm going to add a little bit of saturation down here in the post-processing section in order to make the picture pop a little more. And now I'm ready to stitch it. Uh, go to the Create Panorama tab, make sure that the left images are all selected. Uh, Enter a, an appropriate output file name with a dash L at the end to show that this is a left eye view and stitch left sphere. When that's done, I will select all the right images. First, I'll double click up here to deselect everything, then go down here, drag, tap the space bar to toggle those selection boxes, put uh, an R at the end of the file name, and stitch. When that's finished, I will save the project. Uh, 
under a new name so that I can be sure I know what I just did. I'll make the name the same as the name of the files I just wrote. And when that's done, I'm done and I exit PT GUI. Total working time, 18 minutes, 43 seconds. For proofing stereo panoramas, I use a wonderful universal stereo player called S-View. Here's the new panorama displayed as a grayscale anaglyph. If you have red cyan glasses, you will see a nice clean 3D image. Even without them, you should be able to see that the vertical alignment is perfect and that the horizontal parallax is consistent everywhere. I don't see any stitch errors except a few broken branches way up near the zenith. Hardly anybody will notice those, so I won't bother to try to fix them. You may be able to see the ring of zero parallax around the nadir. This scene actually looks good as a color anaglyph. Not all do, but really true color is the best. Uh, the left sphere by itself makes a pretty panorama, don't you agree? Not all stereo panoramas can be stitched so easily, but the multi-patch method always makes it easier, and it always works. To tell the truth, this is the first acceptable stitch of this panorama I've tried and failed several times before. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching.